welcome back. We're in Exodus 33 now. The first four verses, we're bumping over into the next chapter. Uh, 40 chapters in the book, and we're a long ways in here. We don't have a lot left. But let's look at 33, verses 1 to 4, and then a little comment on it. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Depart, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought up from the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your descendants, I will give it. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, because you are an obstinate people, and I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard this sad word, they went into mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, and none of them put on his ornaments. Okay, let's take those uh, those verses here today. So again, we saw last time God is telling the people, all right, load your stuff up. Let's let's We're going to move on now. They're leaving now, the foot of Mount Sinai. God is going to guide them with his angel, and then his presence goes with them, but sort of at a, at a distance, so to speak, here. Uh, God is going to open the way. God will drive out the Canaanites and so on on the way. But I want you to notice uh, verse uh, verse 4, which to me is the most interesting verse in this little segment here. Notice what it said there. When the people heard this sad word, it was a sad word because God wasn't going to go up directly with them. God is sort of going up with them, but sort of at, at a distance here. And when they heard this sad word, they went into mourning. They were very sad. And none of them put on his ornaments. So that's kind of interesting. So you see, when they left Egypt, they picked up a whole bunch of, uh, you know, jewelry goodies and whatever from Egypt. And uh, none, they, they still have some of that stuff. So to demonstrate their repentance, they are not going to be wearing any of those things. We're all kind of guilty here, aren't we? Kind of, is uh, throw that word away. We are guilty. We're guilty completely of sinning against God. We all need Jesus. We need salvation. Uh, we need to be deeply repentant, not superficially repentant. And so uh, we, should we be wearing, you know, crazy loud things and and um, things that draw attention to ourselves? And, and uh, like these guys had on some crazy Egyptian uh, jewelry. It was probably looked like they'd been to the mall there in Egypt because they had. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, the Egyptians said they plundered the Egyptians and they gave them their stuff. So now they take this off. They're trying to, in some observable, concrete fashion, to show they truly are repentant. Their hearts are repentant, and by their outward appearance, that's going to reflect what's on the inward. That's going to reflect what's in the heart. And so here they are doing some demonstration uh, of actual our depth of our repentance, we're not we're not going to go this way. Uh, but but you might say, uh, do you dare? Are you going to be dare to talk to us about adornment? Yes, I am. I am going to completely dare. Uh, friends, uh, tattoos, various metal jewelry sticking out of your face, your nose, your ears, uh, rings, uh, etc. Boy, I tell you, uh, loud ties. You know, super bright. Um, clothing that, that draws attention to you. These things aren't uh, the way that Jesus acted. They're not the way that Jesus dressed. They're not the way that, that uh, God has for his people. What we should be is we should look uh, modest. We shouldn't look in a way that draws attention to our, our, ourselves. We should not be looking outlandish or looking worldly or doing things that impact against our health. And so, yes, I would say, friends, uh, avoid, completely avoid all of that kind of adornment. Uh, jewelry, jewelry of any kind. Um, there's some marginal pieces in between, you know. Uh, the tie is not my favorite thing. I never wear a tie clip because to me a tie clip is additional uh, jewelry. Um, you may have a different approach to that. You may have a different conviction about that. I'm not here to force all my convictions on you, but I want to say that today's a good day to have a clean, basic, simple appearance, uh, no jewelry. That's kind of a worldly thing. The church used to not allow that. Today, churches are kind of allowing every which thing, but I would say no. St keep, keep to a high standard. Nothing to distract people. Uh, you don't need metal sticking out of your face. You don't need to add holes to your, to your face. Uh, you don't need to adorn yourself with rings and tinkling anklets and, and, and every other kind of uh, adornment. Let's, let's keep it simple, straightforward, clean, um, and it's easier, it's more healthful. Most of all, it reflects good on God's people. Here they're showing their repentance by taking away 
that. And so you and I today, at this late, 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 extremely late hour in Earth's history, we can show our repentance by not being in such a way that we draw a big, uh, big spotlight on ourselves. So anyway, well, let's see what happens. What is God going to do with them? Uh, they, things still sound kind of sketchy here. Uh, they have committed a great sin. So let's watch and see what happens next. And I'll look forward that, uh, to have you join me back again tomorrow morning in the book of Exodus.